Sister Amatullah from Djibouti. Yes, I have two patients, please. Go ahead, Sister Amatullah, please. Hello? Yeah, go ahead, Sister. My first question is, my son, who is living outside my country in, 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 in Canada, he told him he became, he became homosexual. Mm. And he became homosexual. I have now two days, and I'm sick. Can mm. I do something? Can I, can I do something bad for me? In the Lahu and the Ilaya Rajo. Okay. Oh? Yes. How often do you see him? Shall I do? How often do you see him? How often do you see him? How often do you see him? I mean, does he come back home to his country? Do you get to see him? Do you get to talk to him? I don't hear. I don't hear. I. Okay, no I problem, no problem, you Sister what Amatullah. You say, Do you have a second question? Hello? You said you have two questions. Hello. No, I am outside, okay? Uh, brothers, please collect the second question from Sister Amatullah. Uh, she, she, she said that she has a dilemma that her son has declared that he's homosexual and he's abroad. What can I do? And she's crying. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease in her condition and may Allah guide her son. Currently, what you can do is dua, pray for him. Secondly, if you have a chance to communicate with him via email, via the phone, just present to him that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this regard. We have to differentiate between, you know, committing the sin because you are weak, like committing adultery. You can find a religiously practicing person, but he traveled abroad, and he got to know a girl, and he couldn't resist his urge, the desire of having sexual relations. And he fell in that mistake, and he recognizes his mistake. He feels sorry, and he still does it. That's a sin. And between a person who perceives this as perfectly legal, and I don't care what Allah says. The first case is just a sin. It's a major sin. And there is a chance that the person repents and quits. The second case is a state of apostasy where the person doesn't believe in Allah anymore. He rejected his command. He rejected his presence. So if we, we have to determine based on the diagnosis, is it the first or the second case? If it is the first case, it's a lot easier to handle. And if it is the second case, then we're talking, with some, we're talking about somebody who abandoned the deen altogether then if I'm going to talk to him, I'm going to talk to him not about the sexual desire, not about the act of adultery or homosexuality. I'm going to talk to him about belief, and about Allah, and whether Allah exists or not, and uh, what is going to happen after death, life after death, reckoning, accountability, reward, and punishment. This raising the awareness and the consciousness of Allah's presence and belief in the hereafter is what hinders us from falling into errors, whether minor or major.